Happy Saturday night, Ranger fans. We are back with another recap on the Rangers Man Advantage podcast. I'm your host, Jamie. We are here to talk Rangers, Senators, Saturday night, hockey night in Canada. We're ready to talk about a nice victory. Let's go. Welcome back, fans. Thanks for joining us on the Man Advantage podcast. My name's Jamie. Let's talk hockey. So, Saturday night game, Rangers and Sens. You know, Rangers came out from the get-go, and even though they gave up the first goal, they they played a heck of a a whale of a hockey game tonight, uh, really in every facet. So, uh, we're here to dissect and just talk about it a little bit. So, uh, I'd say in the first period, it looked like the Rangers really were on their toes and uh, they had a good four check. They were on the sends almost the entire period. You know, the goal that they gave up was just a little unfortunate. Lafreniere was just a little bit behind on uh, the guy who scored the goal. I, I, I can't even remember his name, but the forward that scored the goal for the uh, send. There was a good pass in front. Oh, Austin Watson. So he scored the goal. But, uh, yeah, it was one nothing. but I got to tell you, I wasn't really worried. And later on in the period, the Rangers came back and uh, off the faceoff, unassisted goal by Artemi Panarin, the bread man, with his 21st of the season. And, you know, tonight was a, was a, uh, is important because Kako and Kevin Rooney came back. Um, Justin Braun was back in the lineup. Um, you had no Tyler Mott, who's out for significant time. So that that did not look like, look like a good injury. It looked like he's going to miss some serious time. So we're wishing him the best. Um, Philip Hedl, he missed today's game as well. So we get Justin Braun back in. Ryan Reeves also came back in. So it was a slightly different looking lineup. The third line consisted of uh, Goudreau at center, Lafreniere on left, Kako on the right. Fourth line was Rooney, Reeves, and uh, Dryden Hunt. So I, I, I don't have much negative things to say about anybody tonight as far as the contribution. They were hitting. They were skating. You know, there was a, a just a – Ottawa had a couple of chances – not a whole lot. Uh, there was like a two-on-one in the second. Uh, so overall, the Rangers just played a, a heck of a game. Um, so Panarin ties it up at one. Shesty barely got tested in the first. I know he gave up the one goal, but not really much he could do on that play. It was bang, bang. Uh, we go to the second, and pretty quickly, the Rangers get the lead on a great passing play. So Panarin gets it, throws like a 50-foot pass cross ice to Cop, who goes top cheese over the shoulder of uh, Forsberg, the goalie for um, Ottawa. And, you know, the Rangers have lots of zone time. There's a lot to like about this game tonight. The Rangers spent the majority of the game in Ottawa's zone. There was very little Rangers playing, you know, defense in their own zone. They got out. They broke out good. Uh, they killed the penalty in the second, and it seemed like the Rangers were the ones on the power play. They were constantly rushing the puck up the ice. So it's 2-1, and it was funny. There was a play along the boards, and Mika got it in the center of the ice. And, you know, he kind of made a slightly dangerous play. But it, it worked, and he got up the ice, and he uh, passed it to Lindgren, and Ryan Lindgren had two two apples tonight, and happy for him. You know, the guy plays hard, and sometimes he gets a bad rap about, you know, oh, he's not playing as good as he did last year. Is he hurt? Is he worn out? You know, he's playing so many minutes. But all those things might be true, and um, 
But it's nice to see him get rewarded, even though all he did was pass the fuck to Ryder, who just walks in and unleashes a wrist shot. And it, it was in and out, and it was just a, it was just a bullet. So, 48th goal of the season, um, assist to uh, Lindgren and Mika Zibanejad. It's three to one. And then just a couple minutes after that, toward the end of the second, you got another um, rush up the ice and kind of an old school goal where Panarin comes down the the uh, the left side and he kind of uses his uh, I think it was his right hand to shield the defender. He walks around him and he just backhands a pass in front to Strom, who was crashing in the, in the net. And puts it home and kind of shocked, first of all, that Strom didn't shoot it at wide. No, but all, all jokes aside, I was glad he scored. It was a, it was a, just a beautiful play by Panarin, who had an insanely good game. He played so well. You know, some of the things that Panarin does with the puck are magical. Uh, I know tonight was a Hockey Night in Canada uh, game. And, you know, we hear about all the teams that play in Canada – and how great the players are, the McDavid, the Matthews, the Marners, the Dry Sidles, you know, those. So I'm really hoping that the Canadian audience got a chance to enjoy um, Panarin's game tonight because he was really, really good tonight. And some of the things he does when he doesn't have the puck, he's so good with his stick. He's so good at getting pucks away when they're in the feet of the opponent. Like, you know, for a guy who's so small, he wins so many battles just because he has a quick stick. and he's, he's just so good at that. So next time you watch the the Rangers, watch for that. He's so good with the with his stick trying to get pucks. Um, so it's 4-1 after two. I think they said the shot attempts were like, you know, something like 54 to 20 or 54 to 15. It's something so one-sided. The Rangers just control the game. And, you know, Ottawa has a lot of injuries and, they're kind of just playing at the string here. Uh, no Thomas Shabbat, no Tim Stutzla, so they, they're they're missing some some big guys. Plus they traded a bunch of guys away at the deadline. I'll tell you who looks good for them is Matthew Joseph. That was a good trade uh, for Ottawa. He's a young player. He's going to be, uh, I believe, twenty four or twenty five. Won two Stanley Cups with Tampa Bay. I mean, he's not a scoring type forward but he's def definitely a guy you can have uh, in, on your third line maybe even your second line so good on them for uh for acquiring him that was a, a nice little move there uh, i think that was part of the nick ball trade to tampa um so we moved to the third and the third was a pretty quiet period you know not a whole lot of action you know, at this point the rangers are kind of settled into their game and they're just kind of you know taking it shift by shift Gallant did a great job he rolled four lines um there was only one power play for each team so mostly five on five rangers did have five five on five goals i know that's been a topic of discussion among rangers twitter five on five goals are so important especially come playoff time so uh i was glad that they were able to produce at five on five. So uh, we get to the end of the, you know, the game, the game is coming to a, to an end and Kreider gets another opportunity. And again, the guy just, he's got such a unbelievable shot. Um, and when he has just a little bit of time to get it off, he, he really doesn't, he's not a great stick handler. So he kind of just fires it. And he went top corner for his 49th goal. And I, I keep telling my kids that, you know, this is a special season. You know, I was, I wasn't around for Vic Hatfield. I, I might've been, it might've been like two, but so I obviously don't remember that, but I certainly remember Adam Graves, 1994, getting 52 goals. I was 22 then. And I certainly remember Yarmir Yager, scoring 54 goals. Um, a little bit of an asterisk there, in my opinion, because that was the first year back from the lockout and scoring was insane. So I think it's harder right now for someone to score 50 goals than it was, say, 16 years ago. 
So Kreider, what he's doing, you know, is just phenomenal. He got a 70th point. Great on him. Vetrano got the assist and along with Langren. So, like I said, Langren had the, had the, had the uh, two assists tonight. And good for him. Uh, it's nice to see Lingren, uh get some some points. Uh, you know, overall, I thought the Rangers played a great game. You know, I'm going to... Another guy that was really noticeable but didn't get any points was Keandre Miller. I feel like the Rangers are really using him more when they have the puck in the offensive zone. He's got so many physical ta- uh, tools uh, in his toolbox, and he's just really gifted. And I think he's just, you know, scratching the surface with his ability. Um, you know, Kube is great. He's got the big shot. But the, there's very few people in the league that can skate like Keandre Miller when he really wants to skate, put his head down and skate hard and skate fast. So, um but you're just seeing him being used in, in the uh, offensive zone. So I want to shout out to him. You know, Laffy and Kako, they didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, they were on the ice for one goal against. But, you know, I, it's going to be tough for Kako. He, he's going to need some time. Man hasn't played in two and a half months, but he missed 31 games. And it's a lot of, that's a lot of games. So um, I hope he can get back up to speed quickly because we're going to need him. Point is now, what do we do with Heedle? Where is he going to fit in the puzzle? Got to be playing in the top nine somewhere. So what does that do to Kako? What does that do to Goudreau? You know, uh, there's some decisions. So we clinched the playoff berth tonight. We're tied for first in the Metropolitan, although Carolina does have a game in hand, and we are playing them on Tuesday night at the Garden. Uh, I fully expect Igor to be playing in that game. I believe it'll be his first game against Carolina this year. So, um, you know, Carolina's been struggling. I'm not sure why. I I haven't been watching a lot of their games. I, I watched some in the beginning of the year, toward the middle. I like their team. I just don't know what's what's going on down there right now. Um, I look forward to seeing them play on Tuesday against the Rangers. So that'll be quite interesting. Um, I know they squeaked one out against Buffalo the other night and they were down early. Buffalo has been given a lot of teams problems, you know, credit to them. Paige Thompson's had a good year and, um, just, uh, uh, Alex Tuck, excuse me, uh, Alex Tuck has really sort of grabbed the the mantle as a leader there. They just signed Owen Power. That's great news for Buffalo fans and hockey fans because, you know, you always want to see the best players play in the NHL. So good young player, played for University of Michigan this year, uh, number one pick from the 2021 draft. So uh, we'll be excited to see him lace him up. Uh, what else is going on in the NHL? Oh, Pittsburgh lost again. So the Rangers are a full eight points clear of the Pittsburgh Penguins. So it does appear that at this moment, regardless of what happens to the Rangers finishing first or, or they finish second, they'll probably finish no lower than second just because Pittsburgh's eight points out and the Rangers would, if the Rangers do play them, they would be uh, the home team in that series, which would be nice. A little home cooking. Um, Austin Matthews, I got to say something about him. He scored two more goals tonight to give him 58 on the year. So you're probably looking at the uh, Hart Trophy there for him, and deservedly so. An amazing player. Um, he is the first. He has the, uh, the most goals ever by a U.S. born player with 58 and counting. He still has like, I think, nine or 10 games left. I know Brett Hull did score 86 goals one year. He had U.S. citizenship, but he was not born in the United States. He was born in Canada. Um, so also Matthews has just been great. And, you know, I just, I'm always fascinated by numbers, and stats and things like that. And, you know, I went back and I looked at Ovechkin's first six years in the league. And I looked at Matthew's first six years. 
he hasn't gotten to the end of his sixth year, but and I just looked at the goal total and Ovechkin had 301 goals in 475 games. So he had his first six seasons, he played 475 games and Ovi had 301 goals. Uh, Matthews has played in 401 games and has 257 goals. And right now, Ovechkin at that point had a 0.633 goals per game. And Matthews is at a 0.64 goals per game. So just saying, everybody calls Ovechkin the greatest goal scorer ever. Matthews is, even though he doesn't have the amount, because he hasn't played as many games, but he is matching Ovechkin as far as, pretty much matching him as far as what he's doing per game. Matthews is just a stud. Uh, if you watch him play, there's very little he does wrong on the ice. He has an amazing release, just a, just a phenomenal player. Um, I, I'm, I'm working on something else as far as a, a different show, a different podcast a topic about Mario Lemieux because I feel like he's the greatest goal scorer. And I, I'm gonna devote a little bit more time to that so we can really dig into the numbers. Uh, so that's that's something we can tease for a later episode. But let me know what you think, guys. Uh, big Ranger win. It was nice to be able to kind of not sweat it out. All these one goal games. They did come from behind, so they got another come from come from behind win. Um, what did you like about tonight? I, I can't imagine there'd be much to dislike about tonight. You know, the fourth line was good. Reeves had some great hits. Rooney was was looked okay, fine in his his. Um, first game back I, you know i know it's ottawa so it's not like a great test tuesday night will be i'm really really looking forward to the atmosphere the buzz at the garden um i don't think the rangers will start sitting guys you know hopefully not you know we don't want to start doing that so early we don't want anybody to get hurt either though um really hope Pryder can get at least one more goal this year uh to get to the 50 and would only be the fourth ranger ever to get the 50 goals you know he only needs five in the last nine games and normally you'd say oh five and nine that's a lot of goals the way he's been going this year we just don't know so um it'd be great to see him tie Yager's record just an amazing season um for chris Kreider, who you know in my opinion he seems like he is really Taken on that mantle as leader, even though he doesn't officially wear the C on his jersey, it seems like to me he's sort of the the leader of the team. Him and Mika, but mostly Kreider. So uh, let me know what you think, guys. Leave a comment and subscribe, like, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm just trying to spread the spread the news about hockey and the Rangers, and just have fun with everything. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jamie Ho- uh, Jamie underscore Hockey. So. We will be seeing you very, very shortly. We will do another video on um, Tuesday night after the game. So I hope everybody has a great Saturday night. Thanks a lot, guys.